thanks for joining me, guys. Thank you very much for your time. Um, if you had a chance to define what is tomorrow, what will it be for you? This is my take, uh, taken by Sir Ken Robinson. Take a look. Do it in a very geeky way. So, it's a mystical land where 99% of all human productivity, motivation, and achievement is stored. So eventually, to be less sarcastic, it means that if I want to do something ambitious, I will delay it for tomorrow. And why it's relevant? It's relevant for us because if you want to tackle our ICD system, it's, it's a very tough cookie to, to crack. Because two things. One of them is, uh, spoiler alert, most of us already have a CI-CD system, so why replace it? It doesn't make any sense. And the second thing, because it's a very, very uh, uh, fundamental part at the core of the DevOps oper operation, any mistakes that we'll do investing in a new technology in our CI-CD system would be very hard to, uh, to fix if we have an, any mistakes, as well as the adoption rates, etc. My name is Elad. Uh, I recently, recently, today, joined TerraSky as a, a tech lead uh, 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 at the city office. And I would like to discuss you about what we can do and explore many ways to solve our problem. So like every day in the office, uh, our type of the development process is a developer pushing its code throughout a, a pull request into our Git repository, and it makes sense for us. And of course, we have the Jenkins. I don't know if you know, the master changed to a controller as the, the semantics change. Everyone think about it. And what happened here? So of course, if you're taking some kind of uh, crazy trip into a memory lane, we manage static slaves. And now the nodes, we manage it by ourselves. It's crazy. But a few years ago, this is how we handle our orchestration of job in Jenkins. We already know that if we have, for example, here Java 11, if we want to orchestrate it, we need to have a slave. The server is going to be some kind of compute that we need to connect to. We'll preload and install all the requirements. But it seems crazy today doing so, no? So it was hilarious in the past. What we should do next? And in this case, and it was introduced around four years ago, maybe a bit more, the Jenkins Kubernetes plugin has uh, uh, showed why it was so important. We uh, invested a lot of compute moving into Kubernetes. Kubernetes, in its nature, it's stateless. You're provisioning compute based on your requirements. But Jenkins, in its main uh, 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 strategy, is static by definition. So how can you solve it? We solved it by the Jenkins Kubernetes plugin. And how we do it? The plugin enabled dynamic scaling of compute and memory resources out of the Kubernetes clusters how it looks like, as you see in the picture. So uh, um, we're developing in our uh, dev environment. We're pushing the code. Now we have a webhook that's triggering our Jenkins. And then the Jenkins files describe the information that I want to run in the pipeline. So what's the benefit of it? The benefit of it is that beside of running and managing, again, static scripts and managing by ourselves, we can have one source of truth where we could describe everything that happened inside the pipeline. And I know this is a known practice that we're using daily, and I'm sure most of you are also doing it. And it's our source of truth. But when we go and try to deploy it and run it in some kind of, uh, as we said, Kubernetes uh, uh, pod in, in, in the Kubernetes world, we use this Kubernetes template as a YAML file. And as you see here, we can describe the metadata, right? It means the containers that I want to run. So for example, if I want to run and build a, a Docker, not the Docker, sorry, a Node.js application, I will instance a Docker container with uh, uh, Node.js. And also, I need to define the, the, the agent to communicate back to the Jenkins. And then I can set up more requirements. So for example, how much memory and CPU I need to consume and this execution alone. And this is a stateless execution. After you're running this pod, it will be eliminated and back into uh, new resources. And of course, we run to run our pipeline business logic. And how are we going to do it? We're going to do it by running a pipeline, Jenkins pipelines, agents, Kubernetes, label, and load the files. And of course, after doing all the configuration, all the bootstrap, 
the business logic, the steps that we want to run, uh, building the NPM package, running Lint, uh, sending it maybe to a Docker, uh, Docker registry, all of it will be in the logic and the step uh, section. Um, what's happened behind the scenes? So behind the scenes, every time they're using the Kubernetes Jenkins, uh, the Jen uh, Kubernetes Jenkins uh, uh, plugin, there are some uh, uh, components behind of it. The runtime, which executes everything, which is uh, the, the pod itself and every other aspect of the community cluster. The spec, which is a metadata and a spec defining any pod that you create in Kubernetes. And of course, you have two more things, which is really important. One of them is a Jenkins agent. And you know how much hassle we need when we need to configure it and communicate back to the master or controller in our case, when we need to get all the information back about how the execution of the pipeline went, good, bad, and also streaming of the STD out and STD, uh, STD out, the STD error of, of all the output. And of course, uh, we have the Docker and Docker. Why are we using the Docker and Docker? The Docker and Docker is very common practice. When you want to run a Dockerized application inside a, a, a Docker also container, you want to do it in order to make a separation between the running components. Because if you will not use Docker and Docker, when you will run it on the main Docker itself, then you can crash it and make problems. This is a bit maybe less relevant for today because when it's encapsulated under a pod, then if something crashed, the pod will be, the, uh, will be crashed, but it's, it will not affect any other pod or for the sake our Kubernetes cluster. So it's a bit less relevant today. And of course, we understand that in a mature company, we have multiple runtime environments and we have multiple development languages we have multiple compilers that we're using, different uh, machine architecture like LRM and X86. Uh, Each one of them requires some more tweaks in the make files or any configuration files. And it's a bit more complex because right now, even if we have the Jenkins file and even if we have uh, uh, the, the best usage of the Kubernetes Jenkins plugin, we still need to manage it in, in some kind of a repository. Uh, for example, our chef agents, Go, Helm, Java, Node.js, and of course, if you want to manage it, then you want to manage your revisions. And managing the revision means that you have a different directory. And you see where I'm going to. It's a lot of management, and you need to handle it version by version. So it's a good way to continue, but it's still more complex. And of course, when we're talking about Jenkins, we talked about August like in the jobs, but what about Jenkins itself? How are we gonna install it? Is it magically gonna happen? So when you're talking about Jenkins, you can try to manage this cool one-seat driver, uh, uh, seat car driver with a bunch of cool plugins that harmonically communicate and work with each other. But guys, it's not working. If you have experience with Jenkins, you know that this is gonna happen and again and again and again. And this is crazy because you know what, why it's so crazy? Because at the end, any one of us just excluded the plugin, just bypassed another thing, and if you're talking about managing Jenkins, the Jenkins itself, not just the pipeline, and orchestrate it in a one runtime environment where you can spin up Jenkins with all the plugins, I don't want to, I don't want to manage each plugin lifecycle differently. It's not gonna happen if I want to promote some kind of, uh, uh, let's call it a cloud native deployment of Jenkins itself. So, how am I going to do it? I'm going to introduce, and this is something that I think very well adopted in the last uh, three years, is that it's uh, uh, the Helm chart of the Jenkins, which is officially supported by the community, and the Jenkins configuration as a code. And what's nice in this plugin, which it's enable you to define under one Helm chart, all the configuration of the Jenkins itself, the image, uh, how uh, the ingress to expose it uh, to the other world, TLS, etc but also with the Jenkins uh, configuration of the plugin, you can define all the configuration of the Jen Jenkins. And what's best of it is that the next time you go on the, to want to go to uh, uh, another company before you're gonna manage upgrade or Jenkins files, you have a snapshot. And when you have the snapshot, you will define every plugin, every configuration in a baseline that's stabilized between all the relations of the, of the plugins. So in order to move forward, you just need to install hem charts, provide these values, YAML files with all the configuration and wire it, wire it together. 
So it seems like Jenkins rules. So we can drop here, give you more, about 20 minutes to, to grab something more to eat. But, and I think we had enough, um, but it's not the case. As you see, there is a lot of configurations, there's a lot of things to do, still a lot of minor, a, a manual wiring need to be done, and it's not a cloud native solution. So why, why it's so complex? It's so complex because when you need to deep dive into your pipeline, and again, in my previous company, we use this architecture, but still, we had a lot of groovy code that need to be checked. A lot of libraries that we built on top of the Jenkins files, it's too much. There are much more simpler way to do so. Can we find another way to do it? So to summarize this section, I think that our relation with Jenkins now, it's a bit complicated. Um, Jenkins, and to be frank, has been around for quite a lot of time. But beside of its amazing plugin system, the core of Jenkins didn't change. And depend on multiple plugins and the relation between them to create a very robust uh, uh, solution that, as I said, in the heart of the DevOps operation, it's too risky to do today. So if I want to move forward, let's try using a, a CNCF and to be more uh, precise, the continuous delivery foundation. And maybe we have a solution in our landscape. So and of course, as I told you, the name of the session was uh, Jenkins in the X Factory show. There was Jenkins 6, and here it is. So this is from the CDF uh, landscape when you're diving into Jenkins. And let's try to figure out what good, what not good. Uh, can you hear? Uh, OK, sorry, I'm not be here. Um, so we have an automated CI CD solution for Kubernetes, which is great. We have a cloud native pipeline, another one. Uh, it's using Tecton. Tecton is a great product to orchestrate your uh, workflow, pipeline workflow. It was ported for a, a, a work from Knative, and now it's a very popular project. Um, it seems like it's an incubating status. Uh, I don't know what it means, but I think it's okay. And it's have a different, uh, decent amount of stars. Okay, so it seems like a very, very good project. Let's see, before we invest, and as we said, it's very critical, let, let's see what's happening. So it was developed in, uh, back in time in, uh, in uh, 2018, uh, and it was introduced by James um, Shakian, which is, uh, 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 he was one of the main influence and, and developer of uh, uh, both uh, Groovy and Camel. And it was adopted by Cloudy, he was working and maybe still working in CloudBees, and it was a blast. Um, a year after, it was stabilized, and Gentix number two supported more practices on the DevOps, on the CI CD world, so, such as monorepos, extending build tools such as KPEC and BuildPacks, and it was great. And in 2020, this is where the CD. Uh, 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 f uh, the, uh, the city foundation has established, and it was one of the earliest adopters of this uh, foundation. And by 2021, it was introducing also Jenkins number three. In version three, it was a major refactoring. It included Tecton, as I showed you, Lighthouse uh, to support Git-based operation, a, a very robust uh, a Jenkins J JX uh, CLI, and it was great. And everything was fine. And in my previous company, we even started developing some kind of a prototype uh, uh, application of it. And it was very good. But it was very opinionated. You can see back in the time, and it was like three years ago, I opened a ticket. I wanted to implement uh, some kind of a pipeline in a company. And in the company, I want to use not a, a, a chart museum, but Artifactory. When you decide to say I'm opinionated, it means that your framework, your platform, is deciding something for you. So of course, of course, over time, there was support, there was a plugin or any other uh, way to, to extend it, and it was fixed. But over time, when you, um, we want to use some kind of opinionated framework or platform, you need to, 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 to understand that if you decide it, you need to embrace it. They have a guidelines how to, how to do it, and it should be very good for you. But something happened. As you see here, this is a contributors uh, 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 page of uh, Jenkins 6JX uh, uh, website. 
Uh, and as you can see here, it was great for around three years, but I think we all see there is no contributions today, at least not something that can help us as a community, because we want our software to be evolved, especially the software that we put all the money in. And CloudBees, and I don't know how to backtrace it to a specific time, they had a distribution, a managed distribution, which is also very important for us. But now when you go to the website, you see the page say, okay, guys, mm, CloudBees, Jenkins distribution is not no longer available. You're all welcome to go to the website, to the GitHub, and work the project, but we do not support it anymore. Guys, we may have a problem. If you look on the Git ticket, okay, let's see how much traffic we have on the issues in GitHub. This is around 20 uh, tickets that was open in 2023. Some of them are really just uh, at high level, some kind of uh, find the contribution, Jenkins contribution award, okay, great, I want to see who it is. Uh, but it was it, it, it not active. And I think that the last thing to put here is that when you see the, the uh, TOC, the Technical Oversight Committee, you can see that they clearly state that we're looking for more contributors. So guys, I think that we have a problem. We spend a lot of time, we spend a lot of money. This is our CI CD system. What's gonna happen now? So I think that at this moment, you're going to say, dude, what are you doing? You're just depressing us. You don't, see, you don't give us any solution. You're just telling us what is wrong. But I think, I think it's important because I'm going to show you the next big thing. I want to show you what platform will solve all your problem. Make sense? No, I'm not gonna do it. Why? Because I'm not gonna be here in three year times telling you again, I selected another technology, which is amazing, but now guys, it's all dead. This is what I've done in Yala DevOps three years ago. So shame on, shame on me. So I think I want to take another approach when we're talking today. There are success story, and there are not success story, to be politically correct. And I think that the next time we're deciding on CI CD system, instead of selecting a specific technology, let's try to focus on the pinpoints, the decision making process, what is important for us when we design our next solution. So we are open source, we love open source, we understand that CSNF is the greatest open source commitment committee that I think ever happened after, of course, uh, the foundation of the Linux Foundation itself. And what you see here, taken from the CSNF uh, uh, website, and it's describing what is project maturity. And of course, crossing the Kazam refers when they presented this slide, is, is how the open source owners taking the measurements to move from an early adapters of this is very cool technology, let's use it, to really move into a, a, a border market mainstream customers. And this is a very, very important one. But it's also very important for us to decide if we want to be an early adapters, this or this, or if we want to take only after it was stabilized, okay? And in our case, it's graduated. But I'm saying graduated. Let's see, you know, like what is so amazing in the open source world, everything is open. You can understand every aspect of decision making in CSNF, and this is why they're so great. And as you can see here, they're telling us what is graduated. So graduated means uh, 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 at least two big company, I said big company, but I think two major companies that uh, uh, influence on the contribution level, they spend time, company time, influence on the project itself, they may be the owners, but they may be heavy lifting some of the contribution on the project. It could be uh, 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 doing an external auditing of security concept, security auditing of the project itself to make a governance, out, governance status of the project itself. And also it's important that it will be used by a real company in a real production uh, uh, um, solution. It could be a private one, it could be another open source, but it's really, really important. So this is the first lesson. So in my opinion, this is only me, 
Next time I will decide on, on, on a solution for my customers, for my previous company, or for any other company, I will stick to the stable, I will stick to the maturity. Uh, and when you're talking about CSNF, it so easily can be disrupted. So please, don't bite off more than you can chew. I think we can spend years understanding what's the landscape of CSNF. And we have another project and another project. I used Knative, there is other projects that are doing the same thing for running serverless computing. Which one I selected? I think that we need to focus on the graduate project. And this is a very important uh, takeaway. When you focus about uh, 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 a graduate, and if you agree with me, I think there are four candidates that you need to look for. One of them is the Algo CD. The second one is Jenkins. And Jenkins is a damn good project, and it's okay to stick with it. And of course, when you're talking about orchestration of a pipeline, it could be Tekton, or it you could be Argo Workflow, which is another project. And if you're talking about GitOps operation, Argo CD and Flux are very mature project using production. Uh, they are adapted by Redwell, by VimWell, by other projects as well, as well as uh, Argo CD that we discussed. They have a commercial product that's backed by this technology if you don't want to use open source project. And I think that it's not the only way to go. Take a look on this diagram. I think that if you come into a company and you will tell your managers, okay, you have a CI CD, throw everything away, just put everything new, it's not gonna happen. So why not mix and match? So it's totally okay to keep your Jenkins as, as configured, use Helm charts, use uh, as, uh, uh, configuration as code, use the Kubernetes plugin. Okay, it's okay to manage your, uh, your uh, uh, revision of configuration based on the pipeline. It's totally okay. Take the CD part and break it down. And what it may break it down, it's totally okay that your CI CD will trigger the bill and use GitOps and Argo CD to orchestrate your CD part. So why not combining with the two? So for this, for example, I have an application developed in TypeScript. I'm pushing my code to my GitHub, uh, GitHub repository. Everything is going to the CI CD throughout Jenkins, all right? I'm using build packs and some other technology. But from here, I can divide and conquer. I can decide that for the CI, I know it's working, it's okay, maybe I'm gonna replace it in the future. Let's divide it, and the CD part can be uh, used by another technology, for example, could be by Algo CD or any other technology that you think. I think it's totally okay to say that we can use commercial products. And this is something that was very, very problematic for me. When I adopted uh, Jenkins 6 in our company and in my previous company, and we just, as I said, rolled back, I think one of the things wasn't just because the lack of support. It's working. Part time it's worked, part time it's not. But for a mature company, when you do evaluations, when you do anything that's important for managing for a long scale, you need to know if you have a managed service or not. And by CloudBees deciding to push out from this project, it was very hard. Because even if I was saying in the future I will move to a managed service, it's not going to happen. And by taking a, 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 a very opinionated standalone project, which is currently not under development or basically nothing, it's okay to decide to go with the commercial solutions. So for example, using GitLab, which is doing CI CD, great CI CD, and the CD part is implemented by Flux. Or Harness, which is, they just acquired, I think it was a year ago, maybe less, drone, so now they have a full CI CD system. Don't be tempted by the buzzword. Don't be tempted by the technology. It's just a technology, it's just a buzzword. Your solution, your requirements is to develop a full CI CD solution that it works. And CodeFresh, which is giving you, for example, implementation for Argo CD and all Argo workflow, which is very, very important. Also, don't put your time only on technology. And another example is TAP. The uh, Tanzu, application, uh, Tanzu application platform includes also a CI CD system that can be used as part of your developing your application. AWS has its everything, it's okay. So I think what I want to do, I want to try to summarize it up. The, I'm not gonna tell you which kind of technology to use. What I was trying to tell you is that before you're selecting your next best in line project, before you're moving on to a, another project, think about the maturity of the project. Think about the landscape of CSNF 
And if you decided to go with the incubation project or go with the fully graduated project. And the same thing is that, the second thing is Jenkins is still alive. There is no need to push yourself out of Jenkins and tell you that you have to migrate. It's absolutely okay if you're using the best practices. It's okay to use Jenkins today. It's absolutely okay. And the other solution is that it's okay to use managed solution. And the other point, sorry, is it's okay to use managed solution. It's okay, it's fine. At least if it's not something that you can port off or something that you can change over time, at least you have a company that's backing up and it's okay for a company. I think, in my opinion, it's okay to decide it. And of course, if you want to go fully blown, you can still use Jenkins SX. I think some, some other people will not agree with me, but this was my take. And guys, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much.